the biggest psychopath in sports. That's what this video is titled. So is MLB players, man. What's going on in the MLB? And this one's another picture. Uh, we've had the most hated man in sports, the biggest loser in sports. All, all the stuff comes from MLB. That's what we're checking out today. I'm not actually sure of the guy's name. I've just gone off the video title. If you are new around there, do subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like. Let's find out who the biggest psychopath is. It looks like a picture anyway. Let's go. Max Scherzer is one Max of the Scherzer. best pitchers in baseball. Okay. He also may be a legitimate psycho. Come on, Max. I, I felt zero pain tonight. <laughs> he once made a friend sign a non-disclosure agreement with a black to eye. watch one of his practice sessions. Okay. His catcher once stopped the game and proposed an unfair fantasy football trade to purposely make him mad. Scherzer cursed him out and began throwing three miles per hour faster. I his college it. coach says that Scherzer met him after a game ready to fight him after being benched. In the majors, he cursed out his own manager for congratulating him for pitching well he's had verbal altercations with a teammate during a game with an opposing manager during a game and has verbally berated his own managers while they were trying to take him out of the game in college the minors and multiple times in the major leagues he basically almost died on the mound and kept pitching he broke his nose got a massive black eye and also kept pitching and a few days after a neck injury prevented him from putting on his own shirt he pitched in game seven of the world series Yo, i respect that though massively leagues at one point scherzer's own family had serious concerns over his mental well-being some think that this behavior is due to an extreme competitiveness but according to others max scherzer is legitimately crazy <laughs> baseball doesn't exist with the fire intros as always go check them out um one thing i will say if i ever come to america and i'm like just in a bar or something having a beer and I get talking to someone and they're like, oh yeah, I used to be a pitcher in high school or in college. I'm I'm not sticking around for any more conversations because sorry to any pitchers out there, but it seems like you guys are a bit wild. There's always something going on with the pitchers in the MLB. <laughs> I'm going to avoid that. So the psychopath is motivated above all else by power. Life is a chess game and they are going to win. In college, one of Max Scherzer's coaches said that Scherzer was so out of his mind, he was essentially a quote unquote cartoon character. <laughs> And this was due to several bizarre incidents that went down due to Max's what obsessive competitiveness. And one in particular may be more unbelievable than anything Scherzer's ever done. And it's become folklore at the university to this day. While at the University of Missouri, his teammates challenged him to eat three Chipotle burritos in one sitting. He not only did this, he did it while loading them up with toppings. Today, Scherzer says that he eats a sandwich with over a half pound of roast beef on it before every start. Nah, BCEater.com estimates he ate over 92 pounds of meat during his time in Washington. So maybe he just has a big appetite. That's what Washington does to burritos people. burritos probably has a lot more to do with his teammates doubting he could do it. Scherzer hates that. He has a level of intensity which basically never wears off. His teammates say in college he would grunt, snarl, and talk to himself while pitching during <laughs> fall ball games. During one of these games, he and his teammate got into a screaming match after a long at-bat. This is during a practice game against his own team but even when scherzer isn't facing anyone he gets insanely intense in college his goal was to throw a 100 mile per hour pitch so while in the weight room he would constantly yell 100 as loud as he could throughout his workout and his bullpen sessions are even more insane. To this day, Max Scherzer does his bullpens in full uniform to simulate a real game as close as possible, no matter what, even on days he isn't pitching. David Price once asked Scherzer if he could watch his bullpen session, and Scherzer allowed him to, but made him sign a non-disclosure agreement so he wouldn't give I'm away any of his secrets. He is so obsessed. So I've just had a thought come into my head. I don't know how accurate this idea is. Is baseball the most individual team sport? You know what I mean? Like, it is a team sport. You're playing as a team. But everyone's kind of doing the jobs by themselves. I suppose the pitcher and the catcher need a relationship. But when you're batting, eh, you're on your own, basically, aren't you? Like, you got guys running the bases, but they're not affecting what you do. Fielding must have some aspects of teamwork. But again, it doesn't sit... I, I don't know the tactics behind it, but compared to, like, basketball or football or soccer, hockey, it's got to be less teamwork than those, right? Is it the least reliant on teamwork and does that lead to getting more of these crazy personalities who make it to the high level because they're individually driven they don't work well with other guys but they don't necessarily need to but no just a thought let me know am i stupid am i onto something
Who knows? About practicing. This season, he was seen playing catch on the field at Nationals Park in the middle of Georgetown's graduation ceremony. He could have played catch anywhere, but he likes doing it on the field, and a graduation ceremony wasn't going to stop him. Lady Anna in college, his teammates say that Max would scream at himself for making bad pitches during bullpens and had a pitch called Fastball Extra, where he would just scream the word juice as loud as he could <laughs> and throw a regular fastball four to five miles per hour faster. His college teammates still call him juice to this day. But despite all of this insane intensity, Scherzer was essentially benched his freshman year for lack of control, which obviously pissed him off. According to his manager, after their team got blown out, Scherzer met him after the game looking like he was about to fight him and got into a screaming match about not pitching. As a freshman, 10 years, two Cy Youngs, and a World Series later, Max Scherzer says he still resents not being allowed to pitch in that game. The next year, he led the conference in ERA, strikeouts, won Big 12 Player of the Year, and set a Missouri record for strikeouts. And his intensity got even worse. During a game against Nebraska, Scherzer refused to come out of the game in the eighth inning. After striking out the first two batters in the ninth, his manager went out for a mound visit. It. Scherzer screamed at him before he said anything, saying that he is finishing the game no matter what. He struck out the last batter and Missouri won. But in his senior year, Scherzer ran into some controversy. While rushing to play video games, and his Scherzer eyes, accidentally- His eyes are cool, the, I paused at the wrong he time. He has like one blue eye and one like brown eye, that's- Pretty cool, you know. Slammed his door on Kinda his creepy, finger. But... He continued to pitch with the hurt finger and developed tendonitis in his bicep. He still pitched great, but a drop in velocity had many people worried. And when the Arizona Diamondbacks drafted him 11th overall, many people were skeptical, including people within the organization. They offered him way less money than he expected and signed a contract only minutes before the deadline, which would have made him a free agent. And this only motivated Scherzer to go even crazier. After only one year of dominating the minor leagues, he was called up to the majors where he set an MLB record for consecutive batters retired for a debut relief appearance. However, the next season, almost all of his stats regressed and the Diamondbacks, who were skeptical that he could stay healthy, traded him to the Detroit Tigers in a three-way trade, which turned out to be a massive mistake. His first two seasons with the Tigers were average at best, but in 2012, something happened to Scherzer that changed his life forever. It turned him from an average pitcher to one of the best in baseball. What happened? But this tragic event no. affected Scherzer so much that his family says they had serious concerns over his mental well-being. On June 20th, 2012, Max's brother Alex tragically took his own life. Damn. Scherzer immediately left the team to be with his family. Only a day after his brother's death, Scherzer decided Decided it was best for him to leave and make his start that was scheduled the next day, saying that it was the one thing he could offer to his family to help them heal. Scherzer got on a plane and went to Pittsburgh. Leading up to the game with his family in the stands, Scherzer broke down and cried in his manager's office and throughout warmups could only concentrate on his brother, but nonetheless was committed to pitching. Scherzer threw six innings, giving up three runs and a loss. When he got back into the dugout, he broke down again, saying that he had never been so exhausted in his entire life. Putting up a quality start days after such a tragic event is insanely courageous, but Scherzer says he knew that if he wanted to be at his best, he couldn't be emotionally wrecked when he took the mound, so he made a pact. When it came to pitching, he could have no distractions. According to his parents, Max stopped talking about his brother altogether and was changing the subject every time he came up. He wanted to solely focus on his goals. This concerned them and made them wonder if he was handling the tragedy in a healthy way. Doesn't but sound in like Max's it. head, he only had room to focus on one thing, becoming the best pitcher on the planet. And that's exactly I mean, what he did. Before enough. that start, Scherzer had an ERA above a five. From that point on, Scherzer put up a 2.72 ERA and ended up leading the league in strikeouts per nine, helping the Tigers win the division, where in the playoffs, he dominated and took the Tigers to the World Series. And the next year was even more impressive. Scherzer set a Tigers record for starting the season 12-0, made his first all-star team, led the league in whip, and won his first ever Cy Young Award. He also took his intensity to a whole new level. According to Alex Avila, one game he noticed Scherzer wasn't pitching with his usual tenacity. So he called a mound visit and purposely offered Scherzer an unfair fantasy football trade. That's Scherzer cool, got though, that's mad, cool, right? yelled at him, and ended up pitching seven innings, earning himself his ninth straight win. 
Scherzer would pitch one more season with the Tigers. He was an all-star, finished fifth in Cy Young voting, and earned himself a seven-year, $210 million contract Shoot. with the Washington Nationals, where he became arguably the best pitcher in the league and the most intense by far. Scherzer yelled at teammates, yelled at opposing managers, yelled at his own managers, and even yelled and snarled to himself while on the mound. For most players, this would come off as extremely disrespectful, but Scherzer is not most players. In 2015, Scherzer led the league in complete games, shutouts, and strikeout to walk ratio. Against the Brewers, he pitched a complete game with 16 strikeouts, but was mad because he was one hit away from a no-hitter. So his very next start, he did throw a no-hitter. Later in the season, he threw a second no-hitter and was literally one strike away from a perfect game until Jose Tabata did this. And the ball Made contact with it. And that's it for the perfect uh, game. tough. He leaned into it. I got hit by more pitches than most. And there's no yeah, he did lean into it, didn't he? He with his elbow. Ah. I would never do that. He also led the league in innings pitch because Scherzer was literally refusing to come out of games. In September, against the Marlins, Scherzer had given up two runs. There was a runner on second in the seventh inning. His manager, Matt Williams, came out to check on him. Scherzer didn't even give him a chance to speak, screamed that he wanted it, and Matt Williams walked away in literally two seconds. Scherzer would get out of the inning two pitches later. In 2017, Dusty Baker came out to the mound to take Scherzer out of the game. It was the eighth inning. He had already thrown 109 pitches and Manny Machado was coming to the plate. Scherzer stared him down and said, I f***ing got him. So Dusty left him in. Four pitches later, he got Machado to pop out. According to his teammate, Sean Doolittle, in 2019, Scherzer was already pissed off all day because he had to wear dark colored uniforms on a hot day game. It was the eighth inning. Scherzer had just struck out his 14th batter of the game and had thrown 117 pitches, which to that point was more pitches thrown by a pitcher all season. Davey Martinez, concerned with his pitch count, walked out to take him out of the game. Scherzer screamed no before he could even get to the mound, said that he f got him, so Martinez left him in. Scherzer struck out Joey Votto in three pitches. Talking to Scherzer during games, whether he's on the mound or in the dugout, is basically impossible. He is known for absolutely refusing to high-five his teammates during games because he doesn't like to be told good job. Adam Eaton tried to high-five him in a game and said that Scherzer flipped out on him. His teammate Spencer Keyboom tried to high-five him during a spring training game and Scherzer did the same thing, later apologizing by saying that he he was just in the zone and a teammate in Arizona even says that he got completely ignored by Scherzer at a charity golf event. <laughs> it seems like for the most part Scherzer's teammates oh. realize that this quirk is just part of his intensity and don't take it personally but Scherzer's intensity has definitely rubbed. I'm not getting psychopath vibes. Uh, this is a bit of an exaggeration. There's nothing psychopath about this really is there? He's just an intense guy by the sounds of it. He dealt with his brother in not the most healthy way, but a very effective way, it sounds like. But psychopaths are a strong, strong word there. At least one teammate the wrong way. In 2018, he and Steven Strasburg got into a screaming match in the dugout while Strasburg was pitching. But the two swear that this was just due to brotherly love. But even in the unlikely event that Strasburg and all of Scherzer's teammates hate his psychotic intensity, they have no choice but to accept it. Because from 2013 to 2019, nobody dominated like Scherzer. He made the All-Star team seven straight seasons. And with the Nationals, he led the league in whip and strikeouts three years in a row. Never finished below fifth in Cy Young voting. What and is won back-to-back back Cy Young awards in 2016 and 2017. From 2013 to 2018, he pitched over 200 innings six years in a row because he absolutely refused to come out of games no matter what even if it meant having his wife put on his jersey for him in 2017 michael <laughs> saunders hit a 100 mile per hour line drive directly Ooh, right, off of Scherzer's knee he collapsed oh, in pain the entire stadium went silent and it really looked like this could be a season ending injury he was on the ground for over a minute but when he finally got up the entire stadium started chanting let's go scherzer so he stayed in the game and ended up pitching six innings. And in the very next inning, he struck out all three batters in nine pitches. Guys, the 82nd insane. immaculate inning in Major League.
major league history. In 2019, Scherzer broke his nose while bunting during batting practice. The very next day, with an insanely massive black eye, Scherzer decided to pitch anyway. And even with his face jiggling, he shut out the Phillies over seven innings with 10 strikeouts. Later that year, Scherzer missed almost a month with a mild rhomboid strain. He wanted to pitch, but the team wouldn't let him. So during a simulated game, after throwing 64 pitches, Scherzer, extremely pissed off, stomped off the mound to his manager and general manager, aggressively shook their hands, stared them in their eye, said absolutely nothing about how he felt during the session, and just walked away. In 2019, during the playoffs, Max Scherzer hurt his neck so bad he couldn't lift his elbow above his shoulder, had to get his wife to put on his shirt for him, required several quarter zone shots, and had to travel with a neck brace. A few days later, he took the mound in Game 7 of the World Series. And even though he was clearly not 100%, he ended up pitching five innings, giving up only two runs, allowing the Nationals to win the World Series for the first time in franchise history. And for this, Scherzer will always be known as a legend in Washington, not only for his insane stats and gutsy performances, but also for his intensity-filled meltdowns. And perhaps his biggest meltdown occurred only a few months before he would leave the Nationals organization okay. all together. In June 2021, on the first day of foreign substance checks, Scherzer was fed up. He was checked after the first inning, which was planned, and was visibly fuming over the new enforcement policy. After the third inning, he was checked again, and still extremely annoyed. But in the fourth inning, Max boiled over. Phillies manager Joe Girardi asked to check Scherzer for a third time in the middle of the inning because he saw Max repeatedly running his fingers through his hair. Scherzer literally undid his belt and began taking off his pants to prove he was clean. The umpires found... But I do kind of get this from it, with like a certain like pinch of salt. I get it like... Imagine constantly being accused of cheating while you just while you just playing, and you if you're not cheating and you're constantly being accused of cheating, that would be frustrating. I know they got to do it, but come on, come on. Nothing, and he started mocking Girardi. An inning later, while walking off the mound, he took it an extra step and stared down Girardi the whole way while walking to the dugout. Girardi came out of the dugout, started screaming at the Nationals dugout. They screamed back. The whole time, Scherzer just stood there, holding up his hands, saying that he had nothing looking like he wanted to murder someone. A few months later, Scherzer was traded to the Dodgers, ending his time in Washington. Even though Scherzer has only been in Los Angeles for a few weeks, his manager, Dave Roberts, has already learned an important lesson. According to him, during Scherzer's first start, he patted him on the butt and said, good job. In his first day in Los Angeles, Scherzer responded by telling his new manager, quote unquote, don't f***ing touch me. Dave Roberts and Scherzer's new teammates gladly promised to no longer touch him while he was pitching again because he is one of the best pitchers in baseball. Is he an actual psychopath? Probably not. But does he act like one on the mound? Absolutely. And that's what makes Max Scherzer the biggest psycho in baseball. Okay. This is the biggest psychopath in sports, though. So we did get clickbaited. We got clickbaited massively on this one, but it's still a banging video. So an absolutely great video. I really enjoyed it. So it's good to learn about these characters, but he's not a psychopath. He's never even had a fight. It's not even like he's had a fight. He's never like cleared the bench or caused like a riot or anything. He seems, it just seems intense. Takes his job seriously. He's not there to make friends. I kind of respect it in a way. Playing through injuries, not the most sensible thing to do. But once again, I respect it. It's better than some of these athletes out there today. You don't even play when they're fit. NBA. NBA. <laughs> there we have it, guys. Let me know what you think about match shirts down below in the comments. And let me know if there's anything you want me to react to as well while you're down there. I'll see you for the next one. Take it easy. Peace.